It's time to do some hacking. And by that, I don't mean the cheaty kind, ones where you can see through walls and gather millions of diamonds without having to do anything. No, we're going to be taking a look at the more useful type of hacks, which are redstone build hacks. Now I know what you're thinking, that was a bold statement, saying that these little build hacks are gonna be more useful than seeing through walls. And you're right, that was a bold statement. You know, I might, I might take it back, to be quite frankly honest with you, but they are incredibly useful, so let's start. Four-way item elevator. I have plenty of these water streams in my base, and I always wondered if there was a way to run four of them into one item elevator, and it turns out it's actually really quite simple. All we need is soul sand down at the bottom, and then slabs running around like this, and no matter where the items come from, they're all going to be traveling upwards. So if we just throw these in here, that's all working perfectly, and even if one comes in super fast, it's going to travel across, actually overshoot a little bit, but then still end up inside the water stream, so no items are being lost. Goodness me, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm gradually losing my voice here. Zero tick smart pistons. On the left, we've got a regular smart piston. I've used these hundreds of times in various different farms, and I've never really been disappointed with the speed. I always thought they were decent. If I hold down the right click button, this is the maximum velocity. But the guys from the Sidecraft server weren't satisfied, and they developed this system right here. The Zero Tick Smart Piston, which is just, it's utterly ridiculous. And it's also really quite simple. Instead of running the redstone power direct into the piston, you run it up into this piston up here, which actually updates the sticky piston and creates this super fast effect. Signal strength is your friend. If you're smart with your signal strength, you can actually use it to create redstone lines that run directly next to one another. For example, here I have a bunch of composters, and inside them, I have got four pumpkin pies. Each one of them has got four pumpkin pies, and as you can see, these redstone lines are four pieces of redstone long. So if I hit this button right here, when the composter is extended upwards, it will power to a signal strength of four, meaning that only the redstone lamp connected to the composter that's extended will actually be powered. So we essentially have redstone lines running next to one another, and even though they're all connected, we still get single outputs. Weird slabs. Ever since we were given the ability to place redstone on top of upside down half slabs, there's been a very strange behavior. Now, I actually thought this had been removed, but it hasn't. This piece of redstone dust right here, which looks like it is heading across in this direction, actually also powers the blocks on either side of it. It's behaving like a redstone dot, even though it looks like this. It's, it's very strange, but it is useful. Transparent goes up, but it doesn't go down. If you want to send a redstone signal that can only travel in one direction, but you don't want to use repeaters, comparators, or anything like that that's going to add delay, what you can do is make use of a transparent block. So if I send this redstone signal, you can see that it travels up and goes across like this, but if I tried to send it in the opposite direction, it's not going to go down. And that is because redstone signals cannot travel down transparent blocks. This is super handy. Redstone redirection. Sometimes you really don't want your redstone dust powering the things that are next to it. And one handy thing to do is play something like a lever there to redirect the redstone dust so that it then doesn't interact anything that is next to it. Now, one thing that I've found is one of the best blocks for this is a trap chest, because unlike the lever, a trap chest doesn't need to be placed on anything. It's a one by one redstone redirecting system. Perfect. Redirecting the re the redirector for the for the redstone. That's a long title, and it, and it's also a bit of an odd one. Now this is a technique that I absolutely love playing around with, but it's also it's very very odd. So here we have a detector rail. is one of the only movable redstone redirectors in the game, and if you push it across, you can see that it does it does redirect the redstone, but this redstone lamp hasn't realised that yet, so it's remaining powered even though it isn't being powered. And if we give it an update it will then realize that it's not being powered. And then if we remove this, you can see the redstone is now running directly into the redstone lamp, but the redstone lamp hasn't realized until we give it an update. This is a fun game mechanic. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. As we all know in Minecraft, things arrive in stacks of 64, and that means that a half stack is 32, a quarter stack is 16, and one eighth of a stack is eight. Now, if we're doing item dispensers, one handy tip to know is that if you use a wooden button with a fast redstone clock, 
it will give you exactly eight items out of each dropper that you use. So if we do a bit of this, you can see that we end up with 16 sticky pistons. So if you want to create item dispensers where you're dispensing, say, a full stack of items or even multiple stacks of items, then you just need to multiply or divide then you need to do some maths. Movable water sources. This is another one that I genuinely thought had been removed, but it turns out it hasn't. You can move waterlogged blocks and keep them as waterlogged as long as it's a fast enough pulse. That pulse length has to be of one tick. So if we just flick this lever right here, our observer will output a one tick pulse into that sticky piston, and you can see that our water source has actually moved forward. The only problem is, is that when you retract it, you're gonna lose the water. There's still plenty of cool things that you can do with this though. H2O, my goodness, you can send a redstone signal through this stuff. That was terrible. Bad plans aside, you actually can send redstone signals through water. It has to be vertical, but the good news is it's, it's really, really quick. And also, it doesn't matter how tall your water column is, it will take the same amount of time regardless. So if we hit this button right here, that would dispense some water on top of this soul sand, creating a bubble column. And as you can see, about a second later, we'll get an output from our observer. But when the bubble column is removed, it's actually instant. And as I say, it doesn't matter how tall this is. This could go from bedrock all the way up to the build limit, and it would take the same amount of time. Wireless redstone. For those of you who are fans of the Hermitcraft series or of the YouTube channel Raiseworks, you will recognize this circuit right here because I recently used it in Hermitcraft episode, and it was originally designed by Raiseworks. And it is genius, okay? I love this thing. It allows us to send redstone signals vertically downwards making use of daylight sensors. I would highly suggest checking out Ray's video on this one because it's super interesting. Redstone updaters. For anyone who's familiar with the weirdness of pistons in the Java edition of Minecraft, this block right here is now powering this sticky piston, but this sticky piston doesn't quite realize it yet. We need to give it an update. Now there are many ways in which we can give it an update. One good one is making use of other pistons, but one that people often forget about is the fact that redstone dust can update pistons and it can actually do it from one block away, which makes it unique. Tick update orders. Oh gosh, that sounds really geeky. It's a little known fact that although repeaters and comparators have exactly the same delay, repeaters are handled in game before comparators. So repeaters output their redstone signal slightly, very, very slightly before comparators do. And that can lead to situations like this happening, which this was the original zero tick pulse generator. Oh, and actually to quickly explain what's happening here, the repeater is powering this block before the comparator actually gets a chance to power the piston and move the block out of the way, which means the piston is powered very, very, very briefly. Technical Minecraft things. Easy piston powering. If you're in a very compact redstone contraption, you're struggling for space and you need to power a row of pistons, which I know sounds very specific, but I've been in that situation many times before. A good way to do it is using a row of observers. As you can see, if we give this front observer an update it will power all of the pistons in a line just like that and the cool thing is is that you kind of get this nice animation going on too i like it semi wireless redstone say for example you want to send a redstone signal between two buildings but you don't want an ugly redstone line one way to do it is to make use of trip wires a trip wire can go up to 40 blocks and a good way to power it is making use of a piston and an armor stand that will activate the trip wire allowing you to take an output magic pistons oh my word my voice I think by the end of this video, I might be speaking in a series of croaks, to be honest with you. Anyway, vocal problems aside, you can use a redstone clock to consistently provide updates to a piston, allowing it to detect when it's powered from locations such as this one. So you can see this block looks like it's flying in the sky, but if we hit this button, the piston actually detects it, extending, giving us a redstone output. Now, the reason that it's doing this is because this powered rail right here is constantly updating it, causing it to check for strange powering locations such as this one. Instant wire. If you need to send a redstone signal over a very long distance and you want it to be instant, no delay whatsoever, then you need to make use of pistons retracting. You see, pistons retract instantly. And when something happens instantly, that means even if you chain them together, because they all do it instantly, everything happens at the same time. So you can see if I flick this lever right here, all those pistons retracted in exactly the same game tick. And if I had a redstone line running from all the way over there to all the way over there, 
it would be the same story. Water logging blocks. Using water inside redstone contraptions is fairly commonplace. I do it all the time. And dispensers are frustrating, to be honest with you. <laughs> I find them really annoying. So a good way to get around using dispensers is making use of waterlogged blocks. They provide you plenty of options to create compact ways to store water inside your redstone systems. Just make sure that you've, you know, patched up any leaks. You don't want this to run out onto your circuitry. Alternative power blocks. When it comes to movable power sources, I'd actually say that I use redstone blocks the least, simply because they tend to power everything around them and you can't push them vertically, which doesn't make them very versatile. Instead, I tend to use cauldrons and composters. As of Minecraft 1.14, you can take comparator outputs from those. We can also take comparator outputs through blocks, which is pretty handy. Obviously, the observer is just the world's greatest thing, giving a one tick pulse every single time that it's moved and also we can make use of gravity blocks in the same fashion. Stacked RS null latches sound like the most complicated thing ever, don't they? But you'll be happy to hear they really aren't, but they are incredibly useful. If you hit one of these buttons, you can see that the comparators out the back actually reflect the button that I've just pressed. If we hit this one here, you can see that comparator turns on. If we hit this one, that comparator turns on and it works in a really simple fashion. When we hit one of these buttons, this redstone line up at the top will reset all of the RS null latches and then this redstone torch will then turn on once that button pops back out and that will power the bottom half of the RS null latch giving us an output. Really nice and easy to construct. I use them all the time. Extreme Pulse Extender. This is a small variation on an Etho Hopper timer. Instead of having two sticky pistons, it has one regular piston, and instead of creating a redstone clock, it now creates a pulse extender. So in here, we have got 16 items. When we hit this button, those 16 items will leave this hopper and start going into this one. We get an output through the comparator. Eventually, all of the items will go into that one. The redstone block will move back across, and all of the items will funnel back into this hopper, and then this comparator will turn off. Now that is just 16 items and you saw the length of the pulse that we got. Imagine if we had five stacks in here. This thing's tiny for how powerful it is. Lag-free redstone. According to people who are far smarter than me, redstone is actually quite a laggy thing in Minecraft. Turning redstone on and off again causes a lot of checks and, and operations to be run by Minecraft's code, which are fairly resource intensive, whereas powered rails don't do that. So if you can use them as an alternative, then I would highly suggest it. If you're playing on a server, all of the server members will thank you. Vegan redstone. This one's a bit of a weird one, and I'll be honest, I haven't really found a use for it, but it's very interesting nonetheless. You can actually send redstone signals through leaf blocks by pushing a log into them. The observer, the observer will detect that. <laughs> <laughs> now, the distance that it travels isn't very far. I think it's limited by about five leaf blocks. And there's a little bit of delay involved. But it just looks hilarious, so it has to be in the video. Shulker box breaking. One problem that I often have with shulker box breaking systems is that there tends to be a chance that the shulker box is actually going to end up somewhere that you don't want it to be. The only reliable way to actually break a shulker box and have it picked up by a hopper is to push downwards onto a slab with a hopper underneath it. As you can see right here, if we hit this button, the shulker box is essentially picked up before it has a chance to even go anywhere. So there's no opportunity for it to get lost because that would be frustrating, not only because shulker boxes are expensive, but also you tend to store expensive things in shulker boxes too. And for the final tip of today's video, it will help you out the most is sub subscribe to, to my channel. <laughs> really? <laughs> Is that really how I'm going to end this video? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, why not? I mean, that's it. That is it. I have just come back from Nashville. I am I am super, super jet-lagged. My throat is destroyed, but the Hermitcraft panel went well. I hope you enjoyed it. Minecon was awesome. Bring on the honey block.
Yeah, 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 yeah